What can we say about the 1955 Chevy that hasn't been said already? Arguably, the Tri-5 cars, as they've been known for years, are some of the most iconic and popular cars of all time. But if you think you've seen every build and body style imaginable, you'll be excited to see this week's feature car. Yeah, that's right, a 55 two-door sedan that has been preserved for enthusiasts to see exactly how they were built. Other than routine maintenance and proper storage, this one-of-a-kind Chevy remains mostly original. A testament to rigorous upkeep and a quality job of assembly from the unknown craftsman at General Motors nearly seven decades ago. Enjoy this one. Now, let's go for a ride. Uh, this is Bill Oxford, and I am the proud owner of a 1955 Chevy 150. So I actually just picked the car up recently at a at a swap meet, um, and from from what I found in the paperwork, this car's been in Phoenix its whole life. It was bought at Cubido uh, Cubido Phoenix dealership back in 1955, which is no longer there, but they are in Tucson now. It's still called Cubido, so the Cubido family and it still has the placard on it on the back it's actually an aluminum placard really cool it's it's awesome to have that you know little piece of the of history on the car like that and i thought you know i i i love 55 chevys i have a 57 and i love the 150s because they're very rare to find everybody's got a bel air or they hot rod the 55 so i bought this it's a three speed six cylinder and it's a three on the tree so it Actually, it's pretty good gas mileage and it's very, it runs like a sewing machine. It just, the thing just keeps on going, so. Plans for this car, I'm probably going to leave it stock because I've hot rodded the other ones. Um, I'll probably, possibly even bring it back to even more stock with the seats, you know, put the correct covers on them. Um, maybe have it painted down the road or just kind of let it patina and see, <laughs> see what happens to it. And the, the wheels will probably always stay just like that with the hubcaps. I love hubcaps on cars. I think that's, that's something that most people don't have anymore. It's really rare to see. So if I bring it all back to factory, like true factory, um, like all the glass would end up getting replaced and, and the rubbers and, and the chrome and all that. So I can bring some of it back. It's, it's not the original paint. So I really, once I get into it, I'll know how much we can do. I can make it shine a lot better. Take this, someone strolled it to death, but I can take all that out. But there's a lot of imperfections in the paint. So part of me just sort of wants to let it sit out in the sun and let's let it patina and see what's under everything, you know, versus trying to salvage what's there because it's not that great of a paint job to start with. I don't have any patina cars. It'd be kind of nice to have a patina car. And a lot, a lot of guys clear coat them uh, once they patina so that it kind of preserves the patina. But I don't, I don't know. I mean, Arizona, you really need to do that it's not going to continue to rust really so we'll just kind of let this one be a little science experiment so, you know it's on its way so i might help speed it up by cutting it a couple times and buffing at it and and letting the patina kind of get a little quicker but this is like literally i have four hot rods now or four classic cars and and this you know 
three speed, six cylinders, by far the most reliable. Every piece of electrical works on the car. Windshield wipers, the um, heater works on it, the little radio works. Of course, back then it was only an AM radio. You couldn't get an FM radio. Um, that all works. Uh, all the brakes, all the lights, turn signals, safety wise, other than, you know, not being able to stop those cars back then, uh, it, everything worked really good. So it's nice to see like time machines like that and just, you know, the people didn't butcher it. It's never been cut up. As far as I can tell, it's only had a six cylinder in it. Usually on those, they put a V8 in it and then they take it off the column, put it on the floor, the manual. I think it's only had two owners. Um, I got a hold of who I, or I sent a message to who I hope was the original owner, just haven't heard anything back yet. Um, but the story was, the guy that I purchased it from, he had he had bought it off a guy um, years ago, and his mom had, the guy's mom had owned it. She bought it in 55. Um, so from what I could tell, it stayed in that family till this gentleman purchased it, had it for a short amount of time, a couple of years, and then sold it. And it was funny because of COVID, like that swap meet, the Glendale swap meet hadn't happened for a year and a half, uh, or at least over a year, and it was the first one back. And I, I saw that there, I'm like, oh man, I gotta get this thing. <laughs> um, as far as I know, that was the first time he put it out there. I hadn't seen it, I, I scour the, I'm always on Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace and offer up looking for cars, so that was the first, he hadn't had anything, hadn't had it on any of the, the sites yet, so that was the first time I'd seen it. it worked out pretty good. Isn't this car just incredible? This car is truly a survivor. Thanks, Bill, for sharing your sweet 55 with us and our viewers today. We appreciate it. Be sure to check back in with us next Sunday morning as we bring you another survivor car. This time, it's a 1963 Buick Electra 225 that remains mostly original, but has been modified slightly to lower the car. You'll love this one. Till next week, remember, please be careful out there.